Keeping your blood sugars in check can be an uphill battle. But if you get your blood sugars right in the morning, your whole day can feel easier. And no, it's not about skipping breakfast or chucking coffee first thing. It's actually much simpler than that. Hi, I am Christelle and I'm not a doctor, but I've been living with type 1 diabetes since 1997. And I've found that if I get my mornings right, it really sets the tone for the whole day. So in this video, I'll be sharing five things that I do every morning that helps me keep my blood sugar steady and my A1C below 6%. Because here's the thing, starting out your day with high blood sugars can feel like you're starting the day in a fight with your body. And we really don't want that. The first thing I do when I wake up is I start sipping water. I do this even before I check my blood sugars. It's such an integrated part of my life now that it's completely routine. I don't even think about it. I have a water bottle on my nightstand. So after turning off my alarm, I instinctively reach for the water. Hydration helps your body regulate blood sugars more effectively. Water in itself won't lower blood sugars, but it can help keep blood sugars from climbing as even mild dehydration can have a negative impact on blood sugars. I aim for about a cup of water in the morning, give or take, but how much you need will depend on you and your body. I then keep sipping water throughout the day. And I think a good tip to gauge whether or not you're dehydrated is to look at your urine. If it's very dark, you probably need to hydrate. I think having a cup of water or two in the morning is a no regret strategy, especially when combined with my other morning strategies. As I mentioned up front, I have my water even before I check in with my blood sugars. And it's interesting. I wasn't even going to include measuring my blood sugars in the five things that I do every morning for great blood sugars. By now, checking my blood sugar is like breathing. I just do it. And I really hope you do as well, because if you don't, how are you going to know if you're on the right track or if your morning routine is setting you up for success? And the second thing that I do every morning for great blood sugars is that I eat. I know this can be a little controversial, there's a lot of people saying that fasting is the only way to get great morning blood sugars. I disagree. At least when it comes to morning fasting, that just does not work for me. When I wake up, my blood sugars will usually start to climb. There are a lot of reasons for that. And it's super normal for a lot of people living with pretty much any type of diabetes. When you wake up, your body will start releasing glucose into the bloodstream to help you get ready for the day. It's being helpful. And I'm not talking about dawn phenomena here, which is when your body releases glucose into your bloodstream. And that usually starts around 3 a.m. I'm talking about feet on the floor, which is yet another glucose push from your body once you wake up. The most effective way of shutting off that influx of glucose is by eating something and preferably something with a little bit of carbohydrates in it. I don't start my day with a stack of pancakes, but rather with a balanced meal of protein, fat, and fiber rich carbohydrates. By feeding my body, it tells it that it doesn't have to be helpful. It doesn't have to push more glucose into my bloodstream. And if I don't, or if I skip the carbs altogether, I'll often see that my blood sugars will keep climbing and I'll end up with sticky highs that can run hours into the day. And that is the second of the five things that I do every morning for great blood sugars. And probably the one that surprises some people the most. We're all different, of course. And I do think that fasting works really well for some people. It's just never been a winning strategy for me. So that's the second thing, eating breakfast. But what I eat really makes a difference as well. Because it's not just eating anything. I'm not dumping just a bunch of carbs on my plate. I found that the meal composition makes a huge difference. As I mentioned, I go for a bowl of lean protein, carbs, and fat. My go-to right now is low-fat plain Greek yogurt, berries and fruit, as well as unsweetened peanut butter. Aside from being super tasty, this also works for a few different reasons. So fibers, fat, and protein are really awesome foods in the sense that they can help blunt the blood sugar impact from the carbs, meaning that you might see a more gradual increase in your blood sugars rather than a sharp increase. They can also help you feel full for longer time, and they're generally good for you. If I were to improve on this breakfast bowl, just a little bit, I could add some chia seeds or crushed flax seeds to just up the fiber a little bit. By now you can hopefully see how all these habits work together. So the fourth habit is probably the most technical of the five things that I do every morning for great blood sugars. I do live with insulin dependent diabetes. So for someone like me, taking the right amount of insulin at the right time is super important. So that is one of the five things that I do every morning for great blood sugars. It is the only medication I take, well, aside from probiotic, it's not really a medication, 
But in this context, insulin cannot be ignored. So for my morning routine, setting myself up for success for the rest of the day, that's closely tied to my rapid acting insulin, so my mealtime insulin dose. I rarely wing it when it comes to carb counting, and I never wing it in the morning, as getting that dose wrong can really butterfly into a whole day of high blood sugars. So I've taken notes over time, and then I've fine-tuned my insulin dose to be exactly what I need for my first meal. I'll also pre-bolus, so that means taking the insulin before the meal fairly aggressively. Often I'll inject my mealtime insulin for my breakfast 20 to 30 minutes before I sit down for the meal, or I'll use a Fresa, which is inhaled insulin that just works super fast. Injected mealtime insulin takes time to work. And if your blood sugar is already climbing or it's already high, it takes time to catch up. You should of course always discuss your insulin dose and your insulin timing with your medical team. I took the guidance that I got from my medical team and then I tailored it to my body. And my doctor approves because it works. And the last of the five things that I do every morning for great blood sugars is that I get moving. Movement really ties all these five things together. It's how I take a good morning and turn it into a great blood sugar day. Here I define movement as anything that gets my heart rate up a little. So right now I'll usually go to the gym, I'll lift weights or do some cardio, or I'll go for a walk. And yes, you heard that right. I do that every day and I have for most of my adult life. I've done different things depending on where I've lived and what I've done for work. For a few years I biked to work and when I had a dog I would walk her every morning and then I had a period of time where I'd get up really early every morning and go to the gym before getting in my car and driving to work. The beauty of movement is that it can lower your blood sugars here and now, but it can also help improve your insulin sensitivity, meaning that your body becomes more effective at pulling glucose out of the bloodstream and into your cells. So let's look at the here and now effects because that's really relevant in the morning. And especially with me because I usually have my breakfast and then I go do my movement. And studies have actually shown that just walking for 10 minutes after eating has been shown to drop peak blood sugars by about 15 to 20 milligrams per deciliter. I usually have to walk for about 20 minutes before I start to see an impact, but we're all different. You might see results quicker. And then we have resistance training. So that's anything that puts your muscles under tension, such as training with weights, resistant bands, or body weight. In addition to making the body more sensitive to insulin, building muscle also means that you have more storage for glucose, and it also allows your body to pull more glucose out of the bloodstream without any additional insulin. You've heard me say this before. Movement is the secret weapon for us living with diabetes to help combat high blood sugars. And this is a soapbox I'll keep stepping on, I'll keep shouting this from the rooftops. But yeah, these are the five things that I've been doing consistently every morning for years, and it's an integrated part of what has allowed me to keep my A1C below 6%. I of course do more than these five things every morning, I mean I also brush my teeth and I shower, but these are the five things that I do every morning for great blood sugars. Do you have anything to add, any tips or tricks? Leave a comment down below this video. While you're at it, why not also give this video a like? And remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. That is that little bell. That way you'll be informed whenever I post new content, you'll never miss a thing. And of course, you can also check out all my other videos on life with diabetes, including this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.